In this video, we will cover some tips and tricks on cooking and packaging your project. Things like cooking out your package and building out your project, trimming your package product, removing stuff we don't need anymore basically, and then options to keep your build tiny. So let's go ahead and look at our project here. Uh, we're gonna have this little menu, we hit play, it'll take our character into our scene, and you know, we can do stuff. It's our basic game. We've spent some time and now we're ready to give this to other people. Now looking through our project folder, we actually have a bunch of stuff. Some of these things were temporary things we never actually worked on. Some of these things are test stuff, and we may not want actually in the package project. First thing you're going to want to do is cook your content. Now, I'm only on Windows. I don't really know if this applies to all everything else, but I'm pretty sure it does. But basically, cooking is when it takes the project. So we'll go to File, Cook Content, and it takes your things. Here's our output log. So it takes your resources, and it'll convert them to the appropriate shaders and compression. It will link things up properly. It basically builds them out into the proper format so then it can then put them into a package file for the actual game itself. One thing to note is this is usually a iterative type thing so it's not going to rebuild everything when you do it. So if you decide to get up and take a break or get a drink or something like that there's nothing stopping you from simply cooking the existing things and it's going to basically only so like for example we saw 20 seconds on that one if we were to cook it again it should take less time because things haven't really changed it doesn't need to rebuild out new textures it doesn't need to rebuild things out for different platforms because we haven't changed platforms and it should basically run quicker the bigger your project is the more textures there are the longer it's going to take so that's something to note on this one once you're done cooking, you're going to go ahead and want to package your product. Now we don't have to wait for it to cook, which is nice. We just simply, it cooks. Packaging is the process of taking your product, getting all the appropriate files, making it playable on the appropriate operating system or platform, and then that's it. So in this case, I'm going to build out for Windows 64. I'm going to put it somewhere. So let's just go ahead and put it on my E drive. If I can figure out where I put my E drive. And we'll make a new folder called um, prod, um, my game. Yeah, screw it. We'll call it my game. And we'll select my game and we'll build it out. Now, this will take a little bit of time. Providing you've cooked your stuff beforehand, it will take less time because it's not going to have to cook them now. If you build out the project and something needs to get cooked, it's going to cook it as the first part, as you can see here. So it's always good to keep stuff cooked, especially over a game jam, because then you have, you're not going to get an hour before submission time and all of a sudden you've never even tried it. That is a big important thing to note right there. Try to test a cooked project every chance you get because there are differences between cooked and in-game projects and you don't want to run into an issue where you're an hour before it's due again you've never tried it and now all of a sudden it's failing. Now once it builds out it's going to build it out into the folder and it's going to basically be the name of your project. In this case it's Windows No Editor. Well sorry not the name of the project. This is the platform it was built out for. Windows No Editor. So my engine version is Windows No Editor. If I it was the debug version, it would be the debug, development, etc. Every platform is going to have a different folder name. What we care about is what's inside of here. Here is our executable. This is the file that we are going to use to run the game. And if we run it, the game should load up and then we can do whatever we want. It works fine. And I think once again, I forgot to have a stupid key to get out. I always forget that. But here is our actual folder. Now there's a couple things. We'll work on trimming this up here in a second, but you'll notice we have an Unreal Engine icon. And if we had a long load time, we had certain things. Like if we run this and we look at the top, we'll see that it says My Awesome Game. Those are settings inside of the project. If we go to Edit, Project Settings, we're gonna find our description, which is our description of our game. Most of these things are for the editor. But down here where it says displayed, this is the name that's displayed when it's in windowed mode. 
my awesome game. That's why it says that. Then you also have other things in here, such as if you want them to maximize it, borderless windowed, allow a close button, things like that. By default, these options are probably fine, but some of these you may want to tweak if you want to tweak them. The important things are maps and modes and platforms. Maps and modes is important because the game default map under default maps is the map that will start up when you start the game. I could be over here in my editor and I could be inside of my game map, for example, playing my game, testing it. But when I build it out, it's going to start up this map. This is your starting map when it's built out. So that's important. The next one is our platforms. Depending on your platform, you'll have options. For example, building out to Windows, we have our game icon. This is the icon that will be put on our executable file, which is what we see here for our project. So if you want that to be different, you change your icon here. These are splash screens if we have some loading time, and you can go ahead and adjust these as well. Now, once our project is built out, we have, for example, a project that's 313 megabytes. And maybe we want to make this a little bit smaller. There's a couple things we can do. Something that's not size related is we can change the name of this. We could change the name of that file if I would have actually hit the rename button to, you know, my awesome game. It's going to follow your normal naming convention for your operating system. But changing the name of this isn't going to cause any issues with your game. This is just basically a launcher or a redirect inside of our engine, inside of the appropriate folder, binaries, whatever oper um, uh, process. Oh my God. Um, anyways, whatever instruction set, in this case, Windows 64, we have the actual file name, UE4 game. And this is our built version of the game for the engine. You do not rename these. Leave that alone. You can get rid of crash report client to save a little bit of space, but then if the game crashes, it's going to hard crash. You'll have no clue. Inside of our engine, we have a few folders. The extras folder contains the visual C++ redistrib redistributor redistributable file, which is about 40 megabytes. And you could get rid of that if you want. Just go and delete the extras folder and it'll be gone. If the person doesn't have it, they'll have to download it themselves unless you provide it separately. Or, you know, it's gonna it's not gonna work basically if they need that. The nice thing is it's a common file. Most people have it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So that's an easy 40 megabyte fix. This you can rename. This file not needed as well. Everything else is gonna be things like the content. This is all of your content built out into file format. Now regarding what goes into there. This is an option to keep it tidy. Unreal Engine, for the most part, when you're building things out, is kind of smart. It's as smart as it can be, and it has some default packaging options. Now, the issue with that is if you reference something anywhere for any reason, even if you're not technically using it, it may still end up being inside your file. So we might have some temporary, some of our other test maps and things like that built in that we don't want. Well, we have an option if we expand down here, we have a huge option down here, and this is, sorry, in our project settings under packaging. Under packaging advanced, we have these extra options. These things are nice to try to give you a little bit more space. So we can create compressed cook packages, it takes more time, but it makes the deployment size, size smaller. And then we have the list of maps and directories. For example, directories to never cook. We could add in a folder in here and we could for, as a good example, you could have a folder called um, uh, testing resources or imported resources, a folder that is just a scratch folder that for you to do things with, not your actual game development stuff. You keep everything in one folder in your project settings, you can never cook that folder and you don't have to worry about that. List of maps to include. If you add in just the maps that are in your project, so for example, in this one, I would want to include in my game jam content, I didn't want to include just the main menu map and the game map. It's not going to build, include the other maps inside of here. Like for example, I have the door example map and my third person map, things I use for testing purposes, but aren't part of my game. 
So if you tell it to only include certain maps, so list of maps to include, it's going to go ahead and ignore the other ones. We do have a couple other options in here. For example, non-asset directories to package. Maybe if you need to add other things in there. It's usually for other um, operating systems. Non-asset directories to copy in. And you just have a few other, other options. But never cook and list of maps to include. Those are two good ways of reducing file size in addition to creating compressed packages. And that's pretty much it. That is going to be our cooking and packaging tips and tricks video. Hopefully it helps you get your game jam entry done quickly and efficiently without any problems. If you managed to listen to this and there's nothing else you want to listen to or even learned, just it's always important, especially with a game jam, to test often. Every time, you know, get your first maps started up. Build out, make sure that works. You add in your first feature, build it out, test it, make sure it works. The more you test, the less likely you are to get to the end and realize your user interface is not working because there's a different execution order in the built version compared to the editor version. And those are tend to happen. So that's it, and hopefully those help out.